Well, Jay, welcome to another episode of Review. We're back, baby. We're back. I can see the poster case is empty. Oh. Which means we don't know what we're going to talk about. I suppose the title of the video gives it away, but what should we talk about, Jay? What's going on? Oh my God. Mike, did you steal fizzy lifting drinks? Of course I did. We're gonna have to pass tons of gas to get out of this situation. <laughs> Where's Rich Evans when you need him? So Jay, what movie are we talking about today on Review? Crash, directed by David Cronenberg. No, I was thinking more like Willy Wonka. So Jay, we're here to talk about one of my favorite films of all time, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory. I think that might surprise some people. Uh, uh, That's one of your favorite movies. I, I love it to this day. Yes. Uh, I, I watched it maybe five million times as a kid. It's one of those movies where I know every single line of dialogue and every single little moment has mm -hmm. some kind of memory in my head, even down to the, the opening credits. Oh yeah. When it says, uh, the titles, when it says producer David L. Walpner, and I used to think they were saying Whopper, like those malted covered malt milk balls when I was a little kid. I Did you think all the, all the credits were gonna be like a candy pun? Yeah, I didn't know what credits were <laughs> watching it and I was like Whopper, they're David just listing, Whopper. They're just listing off candies. My favorite candy is, is a Gene Wilder. A lovely man, Gene Wilder. Oh yeah. Born in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. That's true, that's true. One of the few celebrities from this area. Mark Ruffalo from Kenosha. Liberace, one of the most glamorous and fanciful men who ever lived, came out of the dirtiest, nastiest city in the world, West Allis. <laughs> um, is West Allis where the, the Walker in Drag or Out pub is? Is that West Allis? A lot of the Actors in this are British. Well, that's that's what I did in rewatching it because I watched this a ton as a kid too, but I haven't seen it in a long time. And so rewatching it, I was like, this feels very the humor feels very British, but it turns out it's not really. There's some British actors in it, but uh, director is American and it was shot in Germany. Right. But it has a very sort of that that kind of dry British humor to well, it. Well, a lot of that comes from the school teacher. I've just decided to switch our Friday schedule to Monday, which means that the tests we take each Friday on what we learn during the week will now take place on Monday before we've learned it. And yeah. uh, uh, Rook Salt's father. Mm -hmm. Sweetheart, I can't push them no harder. 19,000 bars an hour they're shelling. Before we get into it, uh, the, uh, Willy, Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory is a lightning in the bottle situation. It's a, it's a Star Wars kind yes. of movie because it's an anomaly in many, many ways. And I think that's why it fascinates me so much because we are talking about director Mel Stewart, primarily came from documentaries. If you look at his IMDb page. Yeah, I was like, what else has he done? And it's all like TV stuff. Documentary and... film, and, and, and we'll talk about that when we break down some of the scenes in this movie, how it has almost a documentary feel. Mm. A lot of the vignettes, a lot of the sequences, um, feel very like slice of life almost. Oh, sure. It, it's, which is heavily contrasted in the terrible Tim Burton movie, <laughs> which we're gonna d delve into a little bit. Like the story behind the movie, uh, I mean, this movie's almost 50 years old now. 1971, I think. This is a good example of uh, when people say like, oh, an old, kids don't like old movies. It's like, yeah, if it's a good movie, it holds up. As a little kid, I loved this. It was before my time. I loved Wizard of Oz before my time, and those movies still hold up for kids today. Yeah, a kid would, kids will like this movie more than the Johnny Depp one. Oh, I think so. What? And even, even with the fact that 60% of this movie is prior to them going to, into the chocolate factory. Yeah, and I will say as a kid, that was the stuff, I, I, I didn't dislike it, but I just, it, it was a, when are they gonna get to the fireworks factory situation? And now in rewatching it, that's like where a lot of the best stuff is mm. as far as the comedy goes. Yeah, well, well that's another thing is it works for adults and children. It's your husband's life or your case of Wonka bars. How long will it give me to think it over? 
And I even liked the stuff until they got to the chocolate factory. There's, there's only one part that I didn't like that. The part so that say, everyone fast forwards through. The everyone, part that everyone fast forwards through, and that's uh, Charlie's mother's song. Mm -hmm. You get blue like everyone, but not just that song, but the whole scene where he goes and visits her. Now I like that scene. I just don't care about that song. All the other songs are great. Yeah. But it's a weird scene too because she's like telling him to to not have dreams. It's very bizarre. There are a hundred billion people in this world, and only five of them will find golden tickets. Even if you had a sack full of money, you probably wouldn't find one. And after this contest is over, you'll be no different from the billions of others who didn't find one. But, uh, so 1971, the movie had a budget of two million dollars, uh, which was, you know, even low for even for 1971. And we're dealing with two million dollars. Today, the picture would probably cost 80 million. Everything we had to do, close to the vest, watch the bucks. For a movie of this scale, yeah, um, with with the big sets and all the costumes and props and stuff, um, it was produced by Quaker Oats. Is it? Is that true? Yeah, I didn't know that. Because um, uh, I think the director's daughter read the book and was like, "Daddy, uh, this is a great movie. This would make a great movie. Make it." Oh, I don't, okay. And then uh, somebody heard that Quaker Oats wanted to was going to release a new chocolate bar. And then they're like, hey, wait a minute, my daughter just read this book, let's make a movie as a tie-in, and we'll call them Wonka Bars. And Quaker Oats was like, oh, okay. And so the movie was made as basically a, a co-advertisement for the release of chocolate bars. <laughs> and then- It's very ahead of its time in terms of uh, cramming in product placement. It, 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 the movie movies was, are nothing but an advertisement. It was a product placement movie and then when they made the chocolate bars, they screwed up the formula, and when the chocolate bars uh, were in room temperature, they would melt. When chocolate bars are supposed to sit on store shelves, and they melt in the heat, but yeah. not in the store. And so they had to recall all of them. Then the movie came out, and there were no chocolate bars. <laughs> so and the movie wasn't like a big hit at first, right? No, no. Which is really surprising because now it's a you know everybody knows it's, this movie. It's, it's one of those things where it was kind of a, a small budget. It was slapped together. But we really were a bunch of amateurs flying by the seat of our pants. And I think the, I think the film reflects that. It has that kind of energy, that kind of ingenuity. Uh, the director was a guy who did documentaries and not kids films. And that has, it has this really dry sense of humor. And it's very dark. Yes. And, and kind of disturbing at parts. It's a classic kids fairy tale. Mm -hmm. They started shooting the movie. It, it, Roald Dahl is credited as the screenwriter, but there's a different guy who like punched it up and mm -hmm. changed stuff. And then, you know, it's, it's like one of those things where at some point someone says, well, let's do a song. <laughs> the handyman can cause he mixes it with lava makes the world taste good. Uh, I think there was talks of Sammy Davis Jr. doing the Candyman song and coming in and doing the part for it. And then they're like, no, we don't want someone famous. We want just some nobody. And then, oh, let's have songs. And then they're like, okay, you, you, these two guys, write, write a bunch of songs. Well, we don't have the script. Eh, just, it's about this chocolate factory and blah, 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 blah. <laughs> and then they're like, okay. And they just, ah, just a couple songs. And it's... The music by Tony Newley and Leslie Brickus had been completed before the screenplay was. And so they started building the sets and in fact in Munich started filming the musical sequences. I know the original book had the Oompa Loompas sing. They probably do. Um, and they ported over the lyrics from their songs for the Johnny Depp version, uh, which is surprising because those songs are fucking awful. Well, yeah. But the lyrics from for that are directly from the original okay. book. See, I haven't read the book, um, so uh, I am not that familiar with the source material. Yeah. Um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, and then there's- The Great Glass Elevator. The Great Glass Elevator. Yeah. I read a lot. I went through a Roald Dahl phase in like fifth grade where I read that, like those and the witches. And oh, okay. Well, great. You could provide some insight. Well, I haven't read them since fifth grade. I don't remember a single thing. Uh, Jay, that was just five years ago. Oh. We said, give us three or four songs, an Oompa Loompa song and a main theme and a couple of other things. But yeah, they're like, uh, we, we don't have uh, dialogue to lead us into these songs. I don't know. What, what's going on? Who's <laughs> And then, the, and then, oh, the, the writer like, was like, I'm done filming the movie. I'm going to my cabin in Maine. You can't reach me. Only by payphone in the woods. 
And they're like, we don't have, the ending of the script says Grandpa Joe yells, yippee. <laughs> and then Mel Stewart's like, I can't have my fucking movie end with Grandpa yelling, yippee. <laughs> Call the writer. <laughs> and he's like, uh, how about, uh... Don't forget what happened to the man who suddenly got everything he always wanted. What happened? He lived happily ever after. That's it! Shoot it! And the whole the whole crew's waiting there. <laughs> and, and, and This is all news to me. I didn't know Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's all this, this, this. What? I didn't watch the comment. The commentary on the Blu-ray had all the kids growing up. I started up. listening to it, and I yeah, said, nah, and like, no, I don't not. care what any of these, these twerps have to say. Yeah, so, so it's that kind of like, you don't have this big, glossy, huge production. You have... It's not overthought. It's and not it's, overthought. And it's definitely not like committee thinking. It's yes. Just, they're flying by the seat of their pants. Yeah, and so it's like, uh, well, let's shoot in Germany. Um, we wanted to make it look like it doesn't take place in any specific place not in america just any town mm -hmm. in any any town in the world it could take place and everyone thinks it's england because there's actors with british accents because they had to to bring in uh actors you know they pulled augustus gloop out of a sewer or there this, <laughs> yeah, this is fat kid we found him at a, at a store he doesn't speak any english mm -hmm. you know so they i think they just fed him his lines you know all, luckily uh, he doesn't have too many yeah and the mother of course I don't know if she was doing a German accent or if she was German, but the Oompa Loompas, uh, they, they, they couldn't find any. They couldn't find any little people in Germany. They found like one and he didn't speak English. So they import some from Turkey. <laughs> and they're like, and none of them spoke English. So they're just like, yeah, carry the big sack of sugar. <laughs> <laughs> and so no one knew what's going on. It's, it's, you can kind of, now that you mentioned that, you can kind of tell in some of the background ones. There's a couple like star Oompa Loompas yeah. that get a lot of screen time. And then but if you look at the ones towards the edge of the frame, there's like confused elderly Oompa Loompas. And yeah, they don't look like they quite know what's happening. Little people were in short supply in 1971 in Germany. <laughs> Six of the most memorable stuff from the movie is the music mm -hmm. and the songs. They're so simple and memorable and catchy. Timeless. Timeless, and then you can- Just like the, the, the Tim Burton version. Right. Timeless. Well, the best creative decision, and maybe you know how he came about being in it, but casting Gene Wilder mm. as Willy Wonka, that's like a, like, perfectly cast, because Gene Wilder, is one of the greats, and and his performance in this is so pitch perfect. Yeah. In terms of every line he says could be interpreted as either completely sincere. Possible, my dear lady. That's absurd, unthinkable. Why? Because that pipe doesn't go to the marshmallow room; it goes to the fudge room. Or total sarcasm. How do you make them? I'm a trifle deaf in this ear. Speak a little louder next time. Yes. And you're never sure which it is. Right. And he 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 is perfect at that. A, a, a lovely man. Uh, his interviews, he's just so sweet and mm -hmm. kind and thoughtful. And he said that, he's like, the, uh, uh, okay, I'll do this film, but I want to come out with a cane when I come out of the factory. Oh, uh, yeah, that's his idea. I heard and, that. And they're like, oh, yeah, whatever. I mean, he's like, my reason was because when I do the cane trick, at that point, after that, you don't ever know when I'm telling the truth or if I'm bullshitting or whatnot. That was his entire reasoning for doing the movie, was like, if I can do that, yeah. then, then I'll do the film. It'll set the stage yeah. for his character. And, and that's the thing, too, is like comparing him and Johnny Depp. Well. Oh, my God. It, it, it's just <laughs> Johnny Depp is atrocious <laughs> in, in that remake. I, I couldn't even finish it. It's, he, it's bizarre because the Tim Burton, Johnny Depp collabs, they're usually like great together. I mean, obviously, we've talked about Ed Wood, but man, whoever had... If it was Tim Burton or Johnny Depp's decision to play that character that way. My initial idea was I kept seeing like a game show host, you know, like a bad game show host in a way. Bravo! Well done. And that led me to the idea of like a children's show host. Tim and I got together and we were talking about it and it's like, really great thing is a local children's show host. A guy who certainly puts on a face. He's sort of like a mix of like Michael Jackson and like a crazy person, and he's he has like an open disdain for the children. Yeah, that's which is weird. Like that's the great thing about the uh, uh, I almost called him Gene Simmons, Gene Wilder performance. 
Maybe they should have cast Gene Simmons in the remake. That anyone would have been better. Anyone. But but yeah, that that you never know how he's looking at these kids in the the Gene Wilder version. Yeah, he's enigmatic, mm-hmm. and, and that's how Wonka should be, not eccentric. Yeah, he is eccentric by nature, but I think those two big words that start with E, maybe Johnny Depp doesn't know the difference between them. <laughs> It's a very interesting interpretation that Johnny Depp is giving it. And it's pure, it's somewhat childlike, but it's it's deep and it's it's vulnerable. I always thought a Veruca was a type of wart you got on the bottom of your foot. <laughs> yeah, have you ever seen the show Kidding with Jim Carrey? No. He plays like a uh, Fred Rogers-esque kind of TV children's show host yeah. and um, he's very bizarre and over the top when he's on his show it remind his depth's performance reminded me of that like Jim Carrey yeah. like I'm gonna be crazy oh, she's frustrated because her rocket ship keeps falling over I think her band boosters are misfiring the idea of like a children's show host Tim and I got together and we were talking about it and it's like really great thing is a local children's show host a guy who certainly puts on a face. And I had like a little moment of, of realization watching the Wonka movie. The Tim Burton one. The Tim Burton one was that moment when they finally get let into the factory, right? And then the doors open and uh, there's this weird like display of like these little marionettes and it's like Willy Wonka, yeah, Willy that, Wonka. That earworm song, yeah. Yes, and um, all the, they have this wide shot of all the kids and their parents just standing there staring at this crazy display and it starts on fire and all this stuff. And I was like, w- that would have been really impactful or fascinating if everything before that was just straight as an arrow. Yes. And, and they open the doors and it's just like this fucked up weird nightmare world. Um, but, but everything outside looks exactly like that. Their lives, completely normal. But mm-hmm. Tim Burton just couldn't resist. Well, that's, yeah, you compare, look at uh, the, the Bucket household in the Gene Wilder movie versus how it looks in the Tim Burton movie. It's, it's almost like it's, the Tim Burton style is so exaggerated. It's just like it's all German expressionism and weird distorted angles and no, you know, straight edges and... It's it's so abstract that it is weird to see actual humans on it. Mm-hmm. Like it looks like it should be as little like stop motion figures or something. Yeah, yeah. It looks when like you put it, real people right. on that set, it looks completely uh, incongruous. Yeah. But you look at the their little house in the original movie, and it's like perfect. It's mm-hmm. very grounded. It's very real. Yeah, and and the way they introduce all the kids as they w- get the golden tickets, mm-hmm. it's like that that Tim Burton style where it's like the the. The exaggeration of the, we'll talk about the Salt family. Oh yeah. You know they're the rich family, um, and so they have these like these really wide shots in their palatial estate, and the father's there, and you know, you know, and it's so like so cartoony and over exaggerated, and you need that contrast of real world and Wonka world. Yes. And Tim Burton just couldn't resist being Tim Burton. Yeah. And I think of like the, how they introduced all the characters in. The 1971 film, like it, it, it does feel like documentary. Mm-hmm. Like they're they're filming in the office of of the Salt Peanut Factory, and <laughs> the mother's knitting, and the father's just complaining, and he's yelling out he's the got window. Got all of his employees opening up the uh, candy bars. Yeah, yeah. and then they, the the news is going around. Like when they're interviewing Augustus Gloop or Mike TV, it's done through the lens of like the media and yeah. it feels like you're in somebody's house and they're documentary. There's no style from the filmmaker. It's just, it's just look, it looks like the media and it's how Charlie is seeing everything. Yeah. He's not getting this warped uh, artistic stylized view of things. He's just seeing this on the news. Mm-hmm. Well, that's, yeah. And that's something that the original movie really builds up well is the, uh, the, the, the worldwide frenzy, the hysteria that is built up around everybody looking for these golden tickets. And that's really kind of missing from the Tim Burton one. It happens very quickly. It's very quick, but it's it's such a big part of the first half of the uh, of the original movie. Mm-hmm. All, the, all the little vignettes. And that's something I appreciate now more than I did when I was a kid. But I dreamed the archangel appeared and whispered into my ear and told me where to find a golden Wonka ticket. And what exactly did he say? Well, what difference does that make? 
This was a dream, a fantasy. I mean, you said just Shut now. Shut up, offsetter, and tell me where the ticket is. All these little, just one scene moments of random people, the best being the woman whose husband has been kidnapped and they're asking about a ransom. It's such a, and it's just delivered completely straight. Yeah. I'll give them anything, anything they want. All I want is to have Harold back. They want your case of Wonka bars. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's, it's magnificent. And also in the, the, the uh, Gene Wilder one is, he's so mysterious, Willy Wonka is so mysterious. You see Charlie looking outside his factory and they get that, that creepy guy with the cart of knives. I guess he's selling knives. Nobody ever comes out. Yeah, and it builds up this mystique to uh, to the character, but you see him almost right off the bat in the Tim Burton one. You see all these little stories with him. Yeah, you see... Grandpa Joe used to work at his factory, which doesn't build to anything. There's no, no point to that. No. Um... Yeah, it really builds up, which is why I think as a kid I wanted him to get there, mm -hmm. because you you want to see the factory, you want to see As an Willy adult, Wonka. you appreciate the slow burn. Exactly. Because you don't exactly. realize when you're a little kid that it's building. And I also think the, the way the Tim Burton one portrayed Charlie's poverty was also either underdone or I mean, misleading or cartoony or whatever. Because in, in the original version, it's many things that make you root for Charlie. Mm -hmm. um, starting right off the bat with his introduction, which is all the kids in the candy store. And apparently the candy man just lets them go wild. <laughs> I guess maybe Bill's their parents later. <laughs> there wasn't really a reason Charlie couldn't part participate in that but that's true he's just kind of throwing shit around yeah it's a, it's a wonderful song um and it's a wonderful little sequence that that shares the joy of 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 childhood and candy and charlie is outside the window because mm -hmm. he, he either can't participate or, or feels like an outsider very clearly done almost cinematically done but uh yeah he goes home and you know like you said his house is realistic uh, the, the, the four grandparents in the bed, the poor mother, the father's not in the picture. I don't know if that's the way in the book. Yeah, I don't remember. I know he's in the yeah. in the Tim Burton movie. But uh, he, he, they're, they're eating cabbage soup, they're poor. Charlie's uh, birthday's coming up. He's got the paper out. He, he buys a piece of bread, a loaf of bread. That just makes everybody happy. And then there's the embarrassing scene in the classroom. Oh yeah, the teacher's asking how many Wonka bars everybody's bought. Yes, and that's also a nice little check mark for Charlie. He chose he chooses not to lie, mm -hmm. uh, and so and that's the big arc of his character. Is is he he doesn't say why? Well, yeah, ten Wonka bars. He, he just two, mm -hmm. you know. Charlie Bucket, how many did you open? Two. Two? What do you mean you only opened two? Uh, he he doesn't say twenty or he could have lied, but he doesn't because mm -hmm. Charlie is pure of heart. Uh, there is a lack of villains in this movie, and in my opinion, the villain is Grandpa Joe. How about this? Charlie, where'd you get that? What difference does it make where he got it? Point is, he got it. Even though... There's he, a, a fake villain, there's Slugworth. Slugworth. Slugworth also was, they had no idea what Slugworth was. They're like, we need a scene where there's a bad guy. Oh, really? And then like, at the end, they're like, oh, okay, let's figure it out. <laughs> If I remember correctly, there was no villain. It didn't have Slugworth. That was an invention by one of us or all of us along the way. That there was this guy whispering in everybody's ear as they went. I don't think I was sure what he was whispering until I got down toward the end of it. You know, I had to make good on that promise of Slugworth. I'm not sure if that was somebody else's idea or mine. Uh, we should probably explain why he is at all these kids' uh, uh, location exactly when they get the golden ticket. Yeah, that's true. That's true too. <laughs> Although that doesn't really make sense because how would you know who's going to get the golden ticket? But it's a, it's a good little mystery. It's a good setup, and it has a payoff at the end. Where... It's, and it's scary too. You know, if oh, you yeah, get that he's golden really ticket, creepy looking. Slugworth is going to come around and whisper something into your ear. <gasps> I congratulate you, little boy. Well done. I have to assume that actor was German and didn't, didn't speak any English. Probably. Yeah. But yes, yeah, Slugworth whispers into their ear, I'll give you a whole bunch of cash if you steal a... Uh, an everlasting, an everlasting gobstopper. gobstopper. Grandpa Joe. Because Willy Wonka is not the villain. Uh, there is no clear villain. Slugworth is kind of set up to be a villain 
in my opinion, Grandpa Joe is. And I, and I think it's not his fault. Grandpa, that money was for tobacco. I told you, Charlie, I've given it up. He, tr he says, uh, you know, no, that's for your tobacco. You know, you like that. Um, and then Charlie finds money in the street. He's rewarded for his, his good karma. But um, the second Charlie comes home with that golden ticket, Grandpa suddenly can walk, <laughs> and he starts singing a song about how he's got a golden ticket. Oh. Cause I've got a golden ticket. I've got a golden twist. I never thought my life would be anything but catastrophe. So, um, and then it's, then it's, I've got a golden ticket. It's not really his fault. I think they gave the songwriters a memo and said, write a song about how you found a golden ticket. We said, give us three or four songs, an Oompa Loompa song and a main theme and a couple of other things. I guess if they didn't know what the plot of the movie oh, I was. I got a golden ticket yeah. and I, who sings this? Not Charlie. Well, <laughs> So you're saying he's the villain because he's he's kind of even though Charlie has won the golden ticket, Grandpa Joe is he grabs it. It's mine now. And he starts a little singing, brat. and Charlie takes him to the chocolate factory. He's the funner grandparent. Uh, his mother is, is his poor mother just cooks and does laundry, <laughs> and Charlie's like, oh, "You're boring. I'm going with Grandpa. Grandpa's fun." And uh, now and that he can walk, apparently, Grandpa's always asking, "What's in it for him?" Even at the very end. So the factory's yours, Charlie. You can move in immediately. And me? It, well, in the great glass Wonkavator, he's like, what about me? <laughs> you know, and, and then also, uh, at the end, he's like, come on, Charlie. Let's go have a talk with Mr. Slugworth. I'll get even with him if it's the last thing I ever do. Slugworth wants a gobstopper. He'll get one. After Wonka That's chews true. him out, he's yeah. like, let's go sell that. So Grandpa is awful. Mm. He's a little devil on Charlie's shoulder. He, he is, he is. He's the, I think, well, not a bad person. He's what, uh, he embodies the cynicism of adults, mm. I oh, guess. Oh, sure, um, yeah. Little boy's got to have something in this world to hope for. What's he got to hope for now? Charlie's still pure. Charlie he, is still He's not pure. been corrupted by anyone yet. Right. Um, so it's good. Grandpa Joe's a good character. He has a character, as opposed to the, the Tim Burton movie. He used to work at the factory. Okay. When they get to the factory, like, you kind of just forget he's even there. He has, like, no personality. He has, he has nothing to do. He doesn't participate in the plot at all. Yeah. That's why that fizzy lifting drink scene is, is actually important. Mm -hmm. Because it shows that Charlie, you know, it still has kind of outside uh, help being corrupted or mm -hmm. something. And Grandpa Joe does fucking nothing in the Tim Burton movie. The movie's not afraid to, to portray children as awful. Yeah. And <laughs> Which is great. In a, in a realistic way. But it might have some messy results. Look at me, I'm gonna be the first person in the world to be sent by television. Hey, get away from that thing! Stop, don't, come back. Except for maybe Veruca Salt. Veruca they, Salt. They, they push her, which is great because it's just her that's that way. If all the kids were that exaggerated, yeah, yeah. then you get the Tim Burton movie. But in that one, yeah, Veruca Salt being so snotty is, is one of the best things in the movie. She, she's a standout character, and her song is great. Yes. And, um, you know, she's a bratty kid. Mike TV, he's just, he doesn't care about anything but TV. <laughs> about Viola Beauregard, uh, who just passed away recently. Oh. Um, Denise Nickerson, I think is her name. You know, she's just kind of like vapid yeah. and, and a little bratty and uh, competitive. And then uh, Augustus Gloop, of course, is a glutton. How do you feel? Hungry. Hungry. <laughs> All those little moments. <laughs> and the reporter with the deer antlers coming out of his sides Perfect of his head. Perfect comedy framing. It's yeah. so flat, so dry. <laughs> and and it, it's, it's, not, it's not begging you to to laugh, it's not showing itself off. Well, even the, the magical world of the factory, the, you know, they go into the, 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 the main room where, where Willy Wonka's first song is, and it's so colorful and bright and everything's edible. That's like the only big set in the movie that has that kind of big, bright, colorful. Mm -hmm. I think when people think of this movie, that's what they think of. But every other, like the next room they go to, well, first there's the boat scene, which we can talk about, but the next room they go to is just like that, the dump, dumpy, like factory room. Mm -hmm. the, the, that main room is the only big magical room. And then it's like, 
It's almost like he's, uh, Willy Wonka is putting on this illusion that this is the factory, but it's really just that yeah. one kind of entrance into the, uh, yeah. the rest of the factory. I think it's all just a front, all those rooms. The real factory is somewhere hidden, oh. where they just make chocolate. <laughs> and all those rooms are just to, just to test kids. Just to fuck with them? Yeah. I mean, because that, that is the ultimate point of the movie, is he's trying to find the perfect kid to take over the factory, so. He's well aware that most of these kids will be awful. What would happen if they were all awful? Then would he, would he have to do this again? Well, that's why he was so frustrated at the end. That's true, yeah. He didn't think Charlie was up to the task. In his uh, office, where everything is, is, is cut in half. <laughs> Even even down to his magnifying glass. He's mm -hmm. reading the half a contract with the half a magnifying glass. Yeah. That, <laughs> why that little touch, I don't know. So he's he's half he's half in the real world, half in the fantasy world. I don't know, but yeah, he 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 lets him have it. Mm -hmm. He yells at Charlie because uh, Charlie stole, stole fizzy, fizzy lifting, lifting drinks. drinks. And the ceiling has to be washed and sanitized. <laughs> um, and so he was very, very upset. Yeah. But then Charlie, even though he gets kicked out and denied his lifetime supply of chocolate, he still gives him back the... He does the right thing. He is. So shines a good deed in a weary world. And, and the reveal of that big atrium room in the first one is just perfectly done. It's mm -hmm. built up where they, get, they go through those little... The, 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 the tiny hallways that keep getting smaller and he's got to put the doo -doo 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 and then but but that music it's like little little music and then and then they all walk in you know and then for the actors they said it was the first time they seen the set oh. they kept them away from the set to get real reactions and in the depth version I, I don't I don't remember everything's janky and weird looking and yeah it's it's, a, it's the Tim Burton style but the the reveal of the room seemed very like not built up yeah say, same with fucking when Charlie opens up and finds the golden ticket it's like it's like the they, editing. they earn that moment that moment in the original version yes yeah. it was an earned moment and it was it was so built up and exciting mm -hmm. and and this is just like I think they cut away and then. They cut to it and it's already open and you already see it. It's something weird, yeah. And it's like, oh my god, that editing was so so poorly done. And then, <laughs> you know, the original is just peeling it back. And... Yeah. Run, Charlie, run! Go straight home and don't stop till you get there! <laughs> that's it, that's it, it's all over. The Wonka contest is all over. The fifth and final ticket has been found. Well, you have your low point where they think that the the final ticket has already been found. And it's a fake. Yeah. And so he buys a piece of candy for himself, but then he buys another one for Grandpa Joe. So it's his, his selflessness. One for my Grandpa, Grandpa Joe. Joe. His selflessness is what, uh, what rewards him. Scrum to be umptious. Yes. Yes, you're right. Right. It's all perfectly built up. Yes, yes. Tell our little guy to turn us around, Walker! Ah! Now I am going to be sick. This movie falls on the very short list of mainstream movies that kill an animal on screen, which is pretty fucked up. It's like this in Apocalypse Now. Yeah. <laughs> That's about the only way the two movies are similar. Yeah, I, I love the boat sequence. I mean, visually, it's terrible. Oh, it's great. Technically, you know, they're just on a rear screen projection. You, you get no impression that they're actually moving in anything, but no. it, it's, it, it has a surreal... It's interesting because this was what, what, 1971? It's still, there's still that, that uh, kind of bleed over from the 60s because it's very psychedelic. Mm, yeah, um, yeah. What is this, a freak But yeah, the, the close ups of, of Gene Wilder with the lights flashing back and forth. Yes. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a nightmare. Yeah, you don't know if Willy Wonka is a bad guy. <laughs> there's no earthly way of knowing. <laughs> He's singing. Which direction we are going. It's, it's a it's a tonal whiplash from tonal that whiplash. last scene. Yeah, Wonka's trying to terrify them or brainwash them, <laughs> and we don't know. And Gene, we don't know because Gene Wilder doesn't let anybody know. Yeah. You can't possibly see where you're going, Wonka. You're right. I can't. That's that is just the one scene. I was saying earlier how it's like you're never sure if he's being sincere or cynical, but obviously that scene, he looks like an insane person. Mm -hmm. But that's intentional. That's to throw everybody yeah. off guard. You don't know what he's up to, and, yeah. and that's part of the ride. And and. There's a there's a wonderful Marilyn Manson video. Oh yeah. Um, doo, doo, 
and so Marilyn Manson's Willy Wonka, and then there's little, there's there's Oompa Loompas, you know. They kind of recreate the scene. It's a terrible like green screen effect. It's a very dated video. So if 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 that particular sequence profoundly emotionally affected someone like Marilyn Manson, you know there's something twisted about it. <laughs> uh, and the chicken getting its head cut off, the weird bugs, like uh, it's just so out of place <laughs> that it works. Yeah. What is this, a Speaking of other dry humor, there's the contract scene, the often forgotten contract scene. Oh, yeah. The beginning. <laughs> Little surprises around every corner, but nothing dangerous. The big contract where the, the, the font slowly gets like so small you can't read it. <laughs> oh, I'm not signing that, you know. Lickable wallpaper for nursery walls. Lickable wallpaper. Lick like an orange. orange. Tastes, tastes like, like, an like an orange. orange. The snozberries taste like snozberries. Snozberry? Who ever heard of a snozberry? Then he grabs her fucking face. <laughs> says, my dear, we, we are, the music makers. are the music makers, and we, we are, are the dreamers, dreamers of the dreams, i.e., shut up. <laughs> That's what he would say in the, uh, the Johnny Depp version, instead of anything like interesting or magical. Shut up. <laughs> You're really weird. That was the most disappointing thing in that remake, because Danny Elfman, you know, collaborated with Tim Burton a lot, done some great scores, was the lead singer of one of my favorite bands, Oingo, Oingo Boingo, so I was excited to hear Oompa Loompa, Oingo Boingo sounding songs. Can, can, but I, can I just let you in on a little secret, Jay? Oingo Boingo sucks. Oingo Boingo is wonderful. Uh, Oingo, Oingo Boingo. Or, uh, How many songs by Oingo Boingo do you even know? That, exactly. Nothing bad ever to me. Nothing bad ever to me. Okay. I'm the Oingo Boingo expert. I can comment on his horrible Oompa Loompa songs. Sure, but, but you know, like, uh, I don't know. Uh, the Rolling Stones are a great band. Can they write Oompa Loompa songs? <laughs> You know what I mean? Uh, no, Tim Burton, or uh, Danny Elfman's style, to me, felt appropriate. But it, he, did, instead of doing anything that would sound like it would fit into that world, he did this weird, like, every song is like a different style of music, like... There's a rock song. There's like a See, that Caribbean like, song. See, that sounds like committee thinking. That, that to me, that maybe, does. maybe. I, it like if it was Danny Elfman's idea, it was a horrible decision. I don't know, but oh, of course we must admit. Originally, I thought all four of the songs would be based on the first one. He goes, no, no, no. Now the senses in the head. and do something like crazy. Let's you know, like Oompa Loompa Rock, and this would be like Queen. It should be like I think. You're nuts. All right, uh, what the heck, I'll do it. No, the Oompa Loompa song, you get it uh, four times, four deaths mm -hmm. outside of Charlie. Uh, I, li I like that they all have a similar and sound. And they're all similar, yeah. and, and, and they're all little, very easy to understand lessons. And then, of course, you have, you have Charlie's song, which is a fine song, it just sucks. <laughs> Uh, the, the I've Got a Golden Ticket song, um, and then the big one, Pure Imagination. Simply look around and view it. Like, it's very, like, very old theatrical, old musical. It, it, it feels very, like, 1940s, 50s kind of, like, musical. Sure. Like, I, I, it's just, the 70s, they could have very easily gone, like, gross, like, funk or disco or yeah. something like you said psychedelic had its kind of influences but it, it feels very like classical yeah like it, well it makes the movie musical. feel timeless it makes it feel timeless the tim burton one where you have all the oompa loompas like playing electric guitars and it's, it's just, just god awful yeah and it's and it's it's and you can't hear what they're saying and mm -hmm. it's just oh so noisy and sick and gross yeah. you can no longer understand the fairy tale the fairy land the fairy land the fairy land the fairy land 
just off-putting. It's just, it's just, just an endless list of bad decisions yeah. with that remake. Starting with making it, really. Maybe with a different director. I, I mean, uh, Tim Burton, especially at that point, is like, okay, we're over this. The Tim Burton style is now like a, it feels like a, uh, like, like he's on autopilot, which led to, the. I think it was the movie after this. Is that when he did his Alice in Wonderland? Which I, I maintain is the ugliest movie I've ever seen visually. Yeah, I mean, there was a, there were a good 20 years where Tim Burton would just remake stuff because... He's still doing it. He did Dumbo recently. He's still yeah, at it. Yeah. Well, it's that lack of, like we were talking about with the original movie, how you have the contrast of the real world with the factory world. And you look at, like, Beetlejuice or something, that's very real until you get to the afterlife world. And maybe 80s Tim Burton would have been able to make a good Willy Wonka movie. Yeah, Pee-wee's Big Adventure. A Pee-wee's Big Adventure, I, I think yeah. it's. I think it's... It's a little mixture of vanity, ego. I'm, I'm the genius master, mm. Tim Burton of my visual style, blah, 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 blah. And then it's like budget too. It's just yeah. like, here's a hundred million dollars to make a Willy Wonka movie. Go crazy. Yeah. People love my visual style. And it's like, yeah. That's not what made the, 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 the first movie worked because the songs are simple. Charlie's likable. Charlie's likable. It's a nice little children's fairy tale story. Willy Wonka, the performance by Gene Wilder, is iconic. Perfect. Pitch perfect in terms of its tone, and it's inventive with a relatively low budget. Mm -hmm. Weird things that you don't see, like the hand coat hangers, the gags <laughs> with the big contract on the wall, the, the, <laughs> the, the Wonka bubble machine oh the, yeah the mike tv scene when he gets shrunken down and it's it's, it's not over the top visual effects uh, and and the boat scene mm -hmm. there's there's so many even in that small time frame when they're in the 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 goose the geese sorry that lay the golden eggs and the the the, the Oompa Loompas are packaging them up <laughs> Um, and Veruca Salt goes nuts because she wants everything. <laughs> well, and just the look of the Oompa Loompas, too. Relatively simple. Just put some orange makeup on them. Give them a little track give, suit. Those goofy little pants. Yeah. Oh, God, and that scene where he discovers the Oompa Loompas. Oh, and the Tim Burton one, yeah. Extraneous. Well, that's you have uh, Gene Wilder talking about how he rescued them all from Oompa yeah. Loompa land. And you don't know if he's lying or not. You don't know if he's lying or not, for one thing, but then he's describing like the, the vicious canids and all these like. Schnauz wine. Yeah, all these creatures, canids. and it's just completely left to your imagination. And mm -hmm. yeah, you don't know if he's just making this all up. And then the Tim Burton one, we see Oompa Loompa land. We know it's real. He's running vi around. Vicious canid is just a giant bug. It's so. For, for all its big visuals, it feels so uncreative. Yeah, and, and unnecessary. Oh, yeah. It's, it's the mystery mm -hmm. that's, that's key to the, to the Willy Wonka magic. To the character, yeah. Yeah, and the character. Mr. Wonka, they won't really be burned in the furnace, will they? Hmm. Well, I think that furnace is lit only every other day. So they have a good sporting chance, haven't they? <laughs> Stop. Stop the bomb! <laughs> <laughs> stop, don't. Stop, don't come back. No, please stop, don't come back. I, lo <laughs> I love that he starts getting so bored with the, chil with the children like disobeying him. Yeah. Now he's gotten used to it. What's the part where he's like, uh, call for help? Is that where he's like, help? Help. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, it's when Augustus Gloop is being sucked Yeah, up. okay, that's right. Don't just stand there, do something. Help. Police. Murder. Yeah. I think what, what the best comparison between, and we're not here just to shit on the Tim Burton one. Obviously it was a misfire. We're here to praise the original. Well, it's a good example of comparing it to the original, what works and what doesn't. Yeah, it, it highlights it highlights the great greatness of the first one and it, it highlights the flaws of, of poor decisions with the new one and why it was just all around uh, a bad movie. And it you was, gotta give Willy Wonka a backstory. His daddy issues. It, it, it was the uh, Tim Burton Willy Wonka was so bad and traumatizing that Charlie grew up to be Norman Bates. <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ. <laughs> I 
think the first thing, I, I couldn't finish watching the remake. I had to stop. That's fair. I, it just, everything about it is just so bad. Well, it's, just, it's, it's not just bad, it's obnoxious. I'm terribly sorry. It's obnoxious. Johnny Depp's bad. performance is obnoxious. It, and, and it's just, oh God, I, 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 I don't know what year Gene Wilder died, but I, I hope he never saw that film. I, I, Even if he was alive when it came out, he probably still didn't bother to see it. Well, I, I, if he was invited to the premiere... He, oh, God, how embarrassing. I know, and I think he died somewhat recently. Within the last five years, yeah. Yeah, so I think... Yeah, he probably was alive. If he just said, no, no, thank you, I won't be attending. Yeah. And he just went back to knitting or whatever he did <laughs> in retirement. I, I just hope he never saw it because... I just picture a single tear rolling down his eye. <laughs> um, this is this is the world. But we we appreciate Gene Wilder's performance, and it, it will live on far beyond Johnny Depp's awful and embarrassing, and sickening, self-indulgent, disgusting, disturbing, <laughs> vain, pointless, and awful performance as Willy Wonka. But in rewatching this film, and I didn't even need to rewatch the old one. The old one opens with beautiful footage of actual chocolate factory operations. Mm -hmm. And boy, oh boy, does that wet your whistle for <laughs> chocolatey goodness. Oh, sure, sure. Seeing the, the Hershey kisses being made and all the fudge and all the things being mixed around and it's all real. Then you watch the Johnny Depp one. Yeah, that's, that's it's the cold, stark, bad looking CGI chocolate that, and then this warm, wonderful documentary looking footage. In inviting. Inviting chocolate real opening that sets the tone. Mm -hmm. I will give it this though. The chocolate river that Augustus Gloop falls into in the Johnny Depp one Boy, that chocolate looks much better than the 1971. It does look like brown water. It doesn't look like it, diarrhea. It doesn't look like <laughs> diarrhea in your toilet bowl. <laughs> the, I, it looks like real thick, goopy chocolate yeah. in like a chocolate fountain. Mm -hmm. The one in the original looks like diarrhea water. That's <laughs> uh, the only fault I'm going to say. All right. Only fault. <laughs> only. You lose. Good day, sir. So if you haven't seen the 1971 Willy Wonka and the Chocolate Factory, please do. You are given permission to fast forward through Charlie's song by his mother. Everybody always has since the beginning of, of time. Maybe the DVD or the Blu-ray has like a chapter skip for just that song. They have, the Blu-ray that I have has all the, like the fun sing-along songs. Oh, with like okay. the words on the screen and Charlie's mom song's not on there. <laughs> Is that true? That's true. <laughs> they even know. Who wants to sing along to that dreary, depressing nonsense? So yeah, watch the original. I know it's 50 years old now, but That's it's, fine. it's a glorious little movie. And it's one of my favorites of all time. Anyway, join us next time on Re